everybody. I'm back again. Day two of the 30-day Facebook Live Challenge. Um, I'm going to be doing something different every day. It might not always be painting. Um, yesterday I painted a uh, USA door hanger. Uh, it was like the shape of the United States of America, but painted like an American flag. So uh, if you missed that, you can go back and watch yesterday's and uh, see how it went. I'm going to go ahead and get uh, my page pulled up here on my iPad so I can see your all's comments because my camera is like so far away and my vision's getting worse every day. Let me get this pulled up. I gotta turn off the volume though because I don't want to hear it. I just want to be able to see your comments. So as you're coming in, say hello, tell me where you're from, tell me what you've been doing today. Hello Pat, you're in Escaro. I think you're friends with my mom, aren't you? <laughs> One of her tennis buddies maybe. Okay. So tonight we're going to be painting um, these little shapes. Uh, they're going to be uh, signs like a photo prop for your kids to hold up on the first day of school. The one side will say first day of and they're going to be chalkboard and they'll be able to write down here kindergarten or first grade or uh, whatever, um, whatever it's the first day of. Uh, you could even use these for like first day of church camp or <laughs> first day of Christmas break. I don't know. You, I'm sure you guys could come up with much better ideas than that. Hello, Jessica and Christy and Tiffany and Becky. I'm so glad you guys are hopping on here and joining me. I'm going to be doing this every day for the next 28 more days, so 30 days total. Um, like I said, tonight we're painting the double-sided chalkboard frames, and I bought this chalkboard paint at Walmart. I've never tried it before until now. Uh, well, I tried it yesterday, but I mean... Before I bought it, I had never tried it. It's called Folk Art Chalkboard Multi-Surface Paint. It says it can be used for indoor and outdoor. I know it's backwards. It's because we're in selfie mode. But it also says that it's dishwasher safe. And I think this is really cute. Look at the, I don't know if you guys can see the picture, maybe. In the picture, it shows like a little mason jar with chalkboard on it. So like, I think you have, if you do it on glass, or terracotta, it says it can be used on ceramics, glass, wood, metal, rigid plastic, even fabric, although I'm not sure why you would use chalkboard paint on fabric. Has anybody ever done that? That's weird. Uh, paper, terracotta, and it says it's durable, weather resistant. It's got a water base. Um, it doesn't smell like water based paint. Like it has a, a weird like ink type smell to it. I don't know. It's not a terrible smell and it's not terribly strong, but it doesn't smell like normal paint. But it says apply the first coat, let it dry for an hour. We're not going to do that tonight because we're only doing one coat. Apply second coat. I'm sure that's like if you need a nice thick coat, but like on these boards, one coat will do it because I put a nice thick coat on to begin with. Cure for 24 hours. And then for glass, it says air dry for 21 days. So this would not be good if you had a last minute project on glass. But you let it dry, air dry for 21 days and then you bake it for an hour in the oven. And then I guess you can put it in the dishwasher or anything. So that would be really cute on your canning jars. Or maybe if you were, uh, my husband actually has a coffee mug that is covered in chalkboard paint. I didn't do it. Somebody gave it to him for Christmas. But you can write like cute little messages on the outside of your coffee mug. So there's an idea for you. Maybe I'll do that in a Facebook Live one day and just test it out. So what I'm going to do first is just get like a nice about one inch wide brush. Doesn't have to be a fancy brush. But this stuff is a lot thicker than your average paint. Like look how goopy that is. But it goes on nice and thick. So you're just going to get a nice good coat on here and I usually just try to cover all of the wood and then because like right now that's real streaky but when I get done covering all the wood then I go back and smooth it out so that it doesn't have the lines because it is kind of thick. Hello Linda from Mylan. You're Whitney's aunt. I was just talking to Whitney on the phone. Hello Tina and Ter Terrain. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right. But anyways, cool name. Uh, let's see. Oh, and I'm going to show you guys another trick too. Like if you're painting both sides of this, um, do not like paint one side and then lay it on a poster board. Like even if you think it's dry, because for some reason it will stick to that poster board, even if it feels like it's dry. Because I've had that happen. And then you have paper stuck to your door hanger. So 
All right, I've got it all covered. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking my brush and doing strokes and all the same. I hope you guys can see this okay. I was trying to get just the right angle so that you could see me and what I'm painting, but I don't know if you're close enough. So hopefully this works. That is the main struggle I have with Facebook Live is getting the camera set up in such a way that you guys can see really well what I'm doing. Okay, so I'll kind of hold that up so you can see the sheen it's got going on. You can kind of see a little bit of lines, but once it dries, it's not nearly as noticeable. It still is just slightly shiny. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint these edges. And I've got six of these to do, so I don't know if we'll get through all of them during the live video because I mainly just wanna show you beginning to end on one whole door hanger. But I posted a picture of a couple of these that I had the other day, and I said these are last couple of ones I have left, who all wants them, and I had so many people wanting them that I thought, well, we'll just make another batch. So hopefully, if you're wanting one, your kids aren't starting school like immediately. I can ship them, it, uh, it's $10 to ship, but um, shipping priority mail, it'll take two, maybe even three days, depending on where you're located. If you're kind of close to Kentucky, it might not even take the full two days, but if you're like California or something, it probably will take a full three days to get to you. But they're $15 each, and uh, they're gonna be double-sided, and they come with a cute little bow. And after I did the edges, it kind of made little marks all around the edges, so I'm just gonna smooth those out real quick. There we go, just all in the same direction. All right, and while that one's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and start on another one real quick. But I'll show you kind of, I've got a bunch of wax paper strips sitting out. They work a lot better if you lay them down, well, it doesn't matter so much because the back side of this is not painted yet, but it will when I go to flip it over because I don't want to wait for one side to completely cure before I paint the next uh, next side. So the wax paper, it will not stick to. That's the trick. Hello, Karami. <laughs> I need to just quit pronouncing y'all's names. I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Of course, I'm one to talk. My name's Tamara, and it's, per it's spelled T-A-M-A-R-A. -A. So lots of people say Tamara. What my parents have always called me Tamara, as if that second A is not in there. But my mother said, it looks much prettier with three A's, so we're going to spell it with three A's. And my dad, it drives him crazy because it's not pronounced how it's spelled. But he's got OCD. That's a whole nother issue. So I'm used to having my name mispronounced, so I'm sure you guys are too. Hello, Heather. You finally caught me live. Yay! I will be live every day for like the next 28 days. I'm doing a 30-day Facebook Live challenge, and I was telling the people yesterday, it's not going to be the same exact time every day because life's just too crazy to try to commit to doing something at the same time every day for 30 days. So if I, ha if I know when I'm going to be getting on, I will try to post sometime during the day and kind of give you guys a heads up. Some days I might not be able to give you a heads up. I might just be like, I'm hopping on right now and I'll surprise you. Um, I might not paint every day. Some days I may just show you like uh, what I'm up to that day or what I'm, um, what I'm uh, cooking or something. So who knows, I may just get on and talk. Today I was at Hobby Lobby and I thought about hopping on live while I was at Hobby Lobby and showing you guys um, the kind of ribbon that I buy, my favorite ribbons, but um, I was in there with my grandma and, and she doesn't really understand technology and I was kind of afraid that she might not understand why I was talking to my phone in the middle of Hobby Lobby and making a video. Even if I tried to explain it to her, she'd probably like, shake her head and not understand. So <laughs> I said it right, good, good. <laughs> Just take a care of me. <laughs> I love that. That's that's hilarious. I always say mine like rhymes with camera. Tamara, camera. So that's that's the easy way to figure out how to pronounce it. Are you needing something? Can I go around? Yeah. Okay. My son's coming in here. I don't know if he's just wanting to get on camera and say hello or what. No. But... Nothing. All right. We got that one painted and smoothed out. Edges real good. I thought I got them, but I'm seeing some wood showing through. And as soon as some of these start drying, we'll flip over and paint the other side too. And then we'll do some lettering on them. I've also got some of my ribbon already cut out because I want to make bows to go on these. So I've got what? 
Not right now. Okay. But I've got this cute ribbon here. It's like watcher foil pink and then this turquoise and then the green. I just thought these were cute, fun colors together. So, ribbon is a big issue of yours lately. Heather says, I've been so hard to keep up with colors I need and I need a better system. Well, I, I have a hard time keeping like, I tend to get like a favorite kind of ribbon and then when I'm making bows, I tend to like overuse it and I don't like conserve it quite like I should. So then I run out and I have to make another Hobby Lobby trip. So luckily about every two weeks, Hobby Lobby has the ribbon 50% off. So don't ever buy your ribbon full price at Hobby Lobby because if you can wait until the next week, it will be half price. That's just the way Hobby Lobby's system works. It's just about every other week. Hello, Gail. How are you? As you're coming on, tell me hello. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what you've been up to lately. Has anybody been making anything? Ooh, I just now saw Melissa's comment. She said she loves using wax paper whenever you paint anything. I only ever used it when I paint these. I hadn't thought about using it when, you, when I paint other things, but I would think that it would be very helpful because it keeps your paint from sticking to whatever you're painting on top of. Let me get this one all smoothed out. We got three down, three to go. Hello, Jolene. How are you? Hi, Chris. From Colorado. Hey, wow, you're way out there. We are in Kentucky. Yeehaw. I'm excited tonight, mainly because my kids start back to school tomorrow. <laughs> Who else's kids are back in school or start school tomorrow? Mine have just, like, in the last week or two, not been getting along. And I think it's just they've been spending too much time together and they're getting tired of each other. They don't want to go back to school, but I'm kind of ready for it. And I know you, my floors probably look really clean during this Facebook Live video, but if you had a zoom in option on your phone to be able to see my floors, you would be like, she has not cleaned those all summer. But I promise I have. You just can't tell because I've had little boys running across them. So I'm looking forward to actually getting my house clean and it staying clean for more than just five minutes. That's one of the big perks to when the kids go back to school. Carol, what am I making? I am making the little first and last day of school signs. I've got like six of them to make. So I'm just painting all these with the chalkboard paint right quick. And uh, then we're gonna put lettering on them and ribbon. And I've just had a few people lately messaging me that they want these. and. I've been trying to whip them out. I cut them out this afternoon and now I'm painting them. Four down, I'm getting back. Oh no, I'm not done. I forgot the edges. Y'all should have hollered at me. Has anybody else been making anything today? Painting anything? <clears throat> I'm wanting to repaint my little girl's bedroom. I don't know if you guys saw in my Instagram stories or actually you probably saw on my Facebook page earlier today that she slept in her big girl bed for the first time last night. Well, now it's kind of gotten me like thinking about her room and what I really want it to look like. And I'm wanting to repaint it because it's like a dark gray right now, which is almost like a cave for a little girl's room. I want like a light airy color. The problem is, is uh, her dresser is like a light teal color, kind of like a turquoise, I guess, but it's a really, really light teal. And then her bed is like a cream colored, cream, like off white. And then her bedding is like red and uh, gray and turquoise and cream. I don't know. It's got a lot of colors in it, but I can't figure out what color to paint the walls. So I don't want to go with a boring color, but I want it to be light and airy. So if you've got any suggestions, I'm all ears. I'm not the best at picking out wall colors. I tend to go a little too bold most of the time. Okay, let me smooth out these lines here. Sarah, you've been painting rocks. Ooh, I'd love to see pictures. We've been hunting for rocks around here. If you guys have not heard of that, or if, it's, if you're like clueless and have no idea what that is, um, it's like a new fad. You paint rocks and you hide them like in, in your town or your park, and then the kids like go rock hunting and they find them, or even if they're just like out shopping, they might find one on the sidewalk somewhere. And it's really fun because it's like finding a piece of art in you know, in nature or just anywhere. And it's almost like Easter egg hunting, only a little more unexpected because you, you may just be on a trip to Big Lots like we were the other day 
and you're getting out of your car and you look over by the cart rally thing where you're supposed to put your cart when you're done shopping and there's one of the painted rocks and it really was kind of neat because we weren't looking for it and didn't expect it but we found it anyways um, sometimes my kids want to keep them but sometimes they want to rehide them and Travis wanted to rehide that one so we held on to it until we got over to the Dairy Queen and we rehid it over at the Dairy Queen so if you found a rock at the Dairy Queen in Murray, Kentucky the other day, that was us. We hid it over there. So anyways, Sarah, where have you been hiding your rocks at? Oh, Heather says, what can you, what do you clean your brushes with while you're painting? Um, normally I just drop them in a cup of water and let them soak. And then when I'm completely done, like painting for the day, I'll take my cup over to the sink and just really rinse them out really good with water. Uh, this paint, since it's so thick, has a hard time washing out compared to some of the others. Um, there is stuff you can buy at like Hobby Lobby and places that uh, is supposed to clean your brushes. I've tried it. Um, it might work better if my paint wasn't like dried on there, but a lot of times my paint is really dried onto my brushes from my paint parties because I guess people don't realize that they're supposed to keep their brushes in water. Or wash them out and sometimes I'm not kidding I will find a paintbrush back in the pile with the rest of them gunked up in paint I'm like really who sat this here because like I don't teach kids I teach adults they know they know better than that you know they do <laughs> I guess we all have our moments who knows but anyways so it's not gonna be able to save a paintbrush like that but if you've got like paint like this it's hard to wash out it might help that well, let's see what else. Your daughter is the admin for Murray Rocks. I didn't know that, Christy. That's awesome. I think it's just a wonderful idea. My kids really love it. I'm really impressed with how many hidden artists we have in our town that, I mean, some of these rocks, I'm not kidding y'all, like they are like, they could sell them. They're so pretty. They're not like kid art or just, I mean, I'm not putting down kid art. Some, some kids are pretty good at art. But, like, they're not dinky. Like, some of them have full, like, landscape paintings on them or something beautiful. And I'm so impressed. I'm like, let me please find one of those because I'm not going to rehide that thing. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to put it in my house. It's so cute. I want to find one painted like a chicken, though. Somebody needs to paint one like a chicken. Because if y'all know me very well at all, you know I love chickens. So, we even found one at church the other day. I don't know if one of our church members hid it or not, but that was pretty unexpected, too. <clears throat> okay, let's see. I'm gonna get caught up on my comments. Johnny said your Facebook videos inspire or Angela said your Facebook videos inspired me to paint a smiley pineapple with sunglasses. Send me a picture. I would love to see it. I love the sun pineapples with sunglasses. Uh, let's see. Carol, you did the rock painting here last summer. You got kids together and painted hundreds of them. I want to do that with our church group, uh, with our, our youth at church. I really want to get them together like on a Sunday afternoon. <clears throat> and all of us paint rocks. I've just got to find a Sunday when I don't have a paint party. So, because like the next couple of Sundays, I think I have paint parties. All right, the last one, and then we can paint the back and put some wording on. I hope the lighting is okay in this video because I've got like pendant lights right here above me that are on my bar, and I had to unscrew the bulb from the one closest to me because it was like so bright that it was making my face super white looking. I don't know. It was weird. So I unscrewed the bulb from that one. I'm hoping the lighting's okay. Sarah, you haven't hid them yet. Just painting them Saturday. Your oldest wants to keep them all. Yes, my kids are like wanting to keep them all too. They're, it's like they get really attached after they paint them and they don't want to hide them. But that's part of the fun though is seeing that other kids have found your, your rocks after you hide them. Carol says lighting's good. Thanks, Carol. Jennifer says, what kind of paint are you using? It is folk art. You can buy it at Walmart. It's kind of expensive though. Like this whole container, which will last me like forever, is like $8.47 or some weird price like that. But I mean, it's got 16 ounces in there and I've been using it and made probably 15 of these signs already. And I've only gotten down to about there. So I mean, like right about there where my finger's at. And so it, it goes a long way because it's so thick. It, um, it, like, I don't know, covers, like I said, I only really need one coat, and then it's good, so. Does anybody got any other ideas for what we could put this chalkboard paint on? Maybe that would give me another Facebook Live video idea. Like I said, maybe on a, a coffee mug or something, I don't know. 
thought I might could go to the local thrift store and buy like a super cheap coffee mug because they are overrun with the coffee mugs. I mean, they're like 10 cents a piece because they've got millions of them. You could get like an old coffee mug and just paint right over it. So I may try that. I don't know. We'll see. If you guys have any other ideas, I'd love to hear them. Let's chalkboard everything. All the things. Painting my edges. This is the last one. And then we can... I may go ahead and do the words on one side and then flip it over. I don't know yet. That, that would make more sense. I don't know. I forgot to smooth out the top of this one. Here I go talking and I forget what I'm supposed to be doing. Your kitchen table is chalk painted for the kids when they are bored. Oh, that's a cool idea. I have seen where um, somebody put chalkboard paint on one of those little like plastic Fisher Price picnic tables, like the little kids table that kids can set up and then they can like doodle on it. So that was a really cute idea. I hadn't thought about a kitchen table. That's, that's really cool. Charlie went and found the um, sidewalk chalk in our cabinet the other day and she said, I draw, I draw outside. And she thought it was a great idea until she got to the door and realized it was actually raining outside and then she didn't want to go out, even though she could have drawn on the porch where it's covered, where there's a roof. But she's kind of scared of storms right now. I don't really get it because I was never scared of storms as a kid, but who knows? She's scared of them for some reason. All right, we've got all of one side painted. Let me find like the first one I did because it's probably dry. I'm running out of counter space here. Let me spread some of these out. Okay, this one looks pretty dry. Oh, I better watch it. I don't want to get paint on this shirt. I should not have put this on. Hang on a second. I gotta find a napkin. I'm sporting my Bennett's Pit Barbecue t-shirt. If you've never been to Bennett's Barbecue, it is the bomb. It is in Gatlinburg. Or Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, maybe both. I don't know. I'm sure it's probably somewhere else too, but those are the only places I've I've been to one. And of course, my last name's Bennett. So when we ate there, my husband and I were like, we got to get a t-shirt with our name on it. <laughs> You've seen wine glasses with chalk paint. That's a good idea. Use Oh, I love that idea, Chris. Chris says use a plate and put days until, like you could do like Christmas or birthday. You could probably paint it almost like multicolor, like a happy everything platter or something, but put days until, like you're counting down. That's a great idea. When you use apple barrel paints lots of the time, you have to put one or two more coats. Do you have to use multiple coats of paint sometimes? Yes, Victoria. Um, almost always, I almost always have to put two coats of paint when I'm using the apple barrel. And I haven't really tried many other brands just because this one's most readily accessible because I go to Walmart like every day. So if you need to find me in town, I'm probably at Walmart. Um, I don't know if other paints are that way. Some of you guys might could tell me, but Christy says, we have a chalk column in our youth group that they write and draw in. Oh, well, that's a cute idea because little kids and people in general just love to write on the walls because that's something you're technically like probably not supposed to do. So that would be fun. Just clean it off every now and then again and start over. All right, I'm going to do some words on these. I'm just going to start by doing like a cute little border that shapes the edge of the frame and it doesn't the cool thing about doing this with the white paint this is just regular old matte white paint uh, the cool thing about doing this is your paint doesn't have to be completely perfect like if it starts to run out of paint and get a little streaky or if it doesn't get a hundred percent coverage it looks kind of cute anyways because it's almost like you wrote on here with chalk if that makes sense. I'll show you up close. See how it's not perfect? It's almost like you did it with chalk. So, you know, it's kind of like it was on purpose. Hello, hello. Say hi as you come on. Okay, this side's going to say first day of. And I'm going to, even though I'm only putting first on the top, I'm going to keep it over here to this side. Because when I put my bow on there, I want the bow to kind of be over here. And I don't want it to cover up the words. The first time I did one of these, I did that by accident, and I was like, whoops, that's not very centered. 
and then I realized, oh, that's actually kind of better because the bow can go over there. So the bow will sit like right here and it won't cover up the words. First day, and you need to make sure you leave plenty of room underneath so they can write whatever words they want to write. They might want to write like preschool or kindergarten or whatever. My two kids are starting fifth grade and second grade tomorrow. I just can't believe it's going by so fast. I'm going to blink and then I'll have a middle schooler next year. Okay, first day of like that. Okay, we're going to let that one dry and do a couple of more. I wonder if I can get up closer to the camera so you guys can see the lettering better. Would that help, maybe? Let me see if I can get you over here a little closer. i got to get my paints over here, too, though. I need a cameraman, y'all. Like, maybe I need to hire my husband to come in here and film me so you can see better what I'm doing. Okay. You don't go back until September. Oh, man, my kids would be so happy. When do you get out of school, though? What kind of brush am I using to write with the white paint? <laughs> the lighting is terrible right here. It's kind of like a filbert brush, and it's only about a quarter inch wide. I don't know what number it is because, like, half of the paint, <laughs> paint is chipped off of my brush. So, it's just, I don't know. I try to, like, pick a brush. <laughs> you have this same shirt. Yeah, Bennett's Pit Barbecue. Um, I try to pick a brush that's, like, maybe just slightly skinnier than the size of the letters that I want. You get out at the end of June. So we get out like the end of May. I think this year we got out like May the 17th or something. So that's really early. So I guess it's not so bad that we have to go back early if we're getting out early. Okay. We're going to, let me see if I can get you closer. It's hard to hold it up and paint at the same time. This takes super duper talent, y'all. And I may finish the design here at the bottom after I do the words because I'm going to get my hand all in it. I don't know if y'all can see. I'm like pushing down and then lifting up. And then I'm starting, I will not starting on the letter, I'm starting over to the side of it because it kind of makes it look more like kid handwriting maybe. And dot. And down. And see, like, it's kind of cute, too, like, if your letters aren't perfectly parallel, like, that one's kind of leaning a little bit. And then, like I said, don't start on your letter. If you want it to look like kid handwriting, start over to the side a little bit. And, like, make your some of your letters look a little crooked. That looks a little bit like a kid might have written it. You guys always say you don't have good handwriting to do uh, door hangers. Well, this is one where you don't have to have good handwriting because it wants to look kind of like a kid did it. Or you want it to look kind of like a kid might have done it. And I do I always do that little dewy right there. I don't know what you call that. Tail at the end of the T. Just because it keeps it from looking so stiff. I don't know. Makes the T look a little friendlier, I guess. That's kind of a silly way of saying it. But I don't know. Any other way to explain it. And see, I'm also letting the tails of the D and the A go past or tails. I'm not sure. I'm not using the right terminology. I'm making up my own terminology, but I've got a Y and then when I bring my Y leg down, I'm letting that part hang out there because it makes it look more like a kid drew it. And your O does not have to be perfectly round. Boop, boop. It helps if you make sound effects. Makes it more fun. I'm gonna make that one a little thicker. It looked a little bit not so great. Make sure I'm still on camera here. All right, so I hope this was helpful because I had a lot of people asking me for help with lettering. <clears throat> so hopefully that kind of helps you see how I do that. I'll go ahead and do like the last day words on another one, even though, cause it's not, it's not like you're gonna be able to tell that one side's first day, one side's last day. When they're completely done, it's not gonna matter. That way you can watch me do the lettering of that one. Let's do our little border here. Thank 
you so much to whoever just shared the video. That really helps me out a lot. It helps get the word out and helps new people find me. So that one's kind of wobbly. See, you're not going to be able to tell when I get done. These do not have to be completely perfect. If they were perfect, it would look like something that was not handmade. It wouldn't be so special. It would be like something store-bought. Hang on, I need to paint that part last. I need to be able to hold on there. <clears throat> Courtney, hi from Louisiana. How do you keep from running out of paint while writing? I just dip after like almost every stroke or every letter. See, I'm going to do like last, stroke down, dip. Stroke over, dip. <laughs> I just dip after like ev almost every single stroke. Sometimes I don't, but I like it because it just, it holds plenty of paint. So, we got last, and then that's one of the things that makes hand lettering, you had to step away for just a second. Oh, oh that's okay. Um, that's one of the things about doing hand lettering is if you dip after I, like every letter, it makes it a little easier to get your paint to flow and make your letters look a little better. If your letters seem dinky, I guess that's a great, a good word to use, I don't know. If they seem dinky or like not substantial enough, it's probably because you're using too thin of a brush. Um, you want your letters to be bold and to stand out. And if they're too skinny, they're not gonna stand out. Okay, so that one says last day. Let me do a few more of these first day ones. And then we can paint the back and finish one of these because I know you guys have got things to do and you can't hang out waiting for me to finish something all day long. And I can finish the rest of them later. Okay, first day. Now that's that. That one did not have enough paint. See, if I notice it starts like streaking even on the first stroke, I'll squirt some more paint. <clears throat> and for those of you who have never seen before, I love to put my paint in egg cartons because it keeps the paint from drying out as fast because it doesn't soak the paint up. And uh, it also keeps it kind of like in a nice little puddle so that when you dip, you're getting plenty of paint. You know, like on a paper plate when it spreads out and you dip, sometimes you're just dipping into like a flat surface of paint. But in this, uh, egg carton it keeps it in like a little puddle so when you dip you get plenty where is Charlie she is in bed um I don't know if you guys saw that last night was her first night in a big girl bed well she didn't go to sleep probably until like 10 o'clock partly because she was so excited about her new bed and partly because I didn't put her to bed till like 9 30 because I've always start these projects way too late and then she also went with me to Nashville today and did not get a nap at all and so she came home worn out. So I tried my best to keep her awake until like seven o'clock and we just almost made it. I think we made it to like 645 and then I went ahead and put her to bed. So she is already snoozing. She is exhausted because she needs her naps. All right, we got that one done. I'm going to put my, hang on, let me get some water real quick. So my paintbrush doesn't dry out. And I'm gonna get one of these. Let me find one that's already completely dried out. This one looks pretty good. The first, this first one. I don't, like you can kind of tell if your paint's dry or not because it'll be shiny if it's still wet. And this one looks pretty good. So, uh, like I said, let me turn the camera back this way. We're gonna lay it on a piece of wax paper so that it doesn't stick to my poster board. And I'm gonna flip it upside down, paint the back side. We're just gonna do this real fast and then hair dry it and then I'll write last day of school on the, this on the other side, or on this side, I'm getting tongue tied. And then we'll put a bow on it so you can see the finished product. If any of you, if any of you guys still need one of these, holler at me because I can still make more of them. I just know some of the folks around here locally, their kids are starting tomorrow so it's almost last minute. <clears throat> But if your kids don't start for another week or two or in September, I can ship you at one out this week and you'll get it, you know, probably by Monday of next week. They're $15 each. Shipping is $10. And you can just send me money through PayPal if you like. And I'll get you one sent out. Get this dude covered.
covered, smooth it out, and then we'll dry it super fast. I gotta get my kiddos in bed. It's already 8.37, and I told them already that they were going to bed at 8.30 tonight, which is early for them, but I thought, you know, we probably need that extra sleep on a school night, but Mama's doing Facebook Live, so it's gonna be a little after 8.30. I'm sure they will be heartbroken. All right, let me put that down. Did I paint that on my fridge? Oh, no, I didn't. Let me show you guys my fridge. That is Uppercase Living Vinyl Stickers. Isn't it cool? I used to sell Uppercase Living Vinyl lettering uh, a while back, and I've also got stuff like up here on the archway. So I've got it like on almost every room in my house because I used to sell it. So I got lots of it for free, and I would just put it here, there, and everywhere. But no, it's, it's actually a vinyl sticker. Okay, let me dry this real fast. big are they? These are approximately like maybe 11 to 12 inches. So that's about how big they are ish. I forgot to put my brush in the sink. Hang on. We get it. There we go. All right. I got to write the last day of school on this one so we can do the, the ribbon. Carol said they'd be cute to take for the teachers to take their picture, their kids' picture on the first day of school. Yes, um, I actually had one of the Murray Elementary teachers buy one from me at a paint party because I had an extra one with me. Um, I think her name was Shannon, Shannon Childs. And uh, her and a couple of the teachers went in, and went in together on it because I guess they all teach like the same grade. And they're just going to pass it around on the first day of school and take all the kids' pictures. So I thought that was a really cute idea. All right, let me drop that in. I should have got a cup of water over here, y'all. I don't want all my paintbrushes drying out. All right. <sighs> I forgot to put the words. I'm too busy talking. Let me get a different paintbrush. Some of my paintbrushes are getting kind of stiff, like they need to be replaced. I've got a bunch more ordered, but they haven't come in yet. All right, this one I'm putting last. I had to remind myself. Last. I don't need one that says first on both sides. That wouldn't help. Last day. I thought you might know Shannon. He used to work at that school. Of. All right, and then I gotta dry this. closer to the camera. Okay. I've got my ribbon. There's my scissors. My string. I use like, you can find this stuff at Hobby Lobby. I found it like up by the checkout, you know, where they keep like all the little last minute stuff they want you to buy. It's called Natural Jute and it's $2.99 and it's got 243 feet of it, but it's a nice like thick jute string. And I use this both to hang my door hangers with and to make my bows. Is that an angle brush, square trip brush? It's a rounded tip. Yes, kind of like the one I was talking about yesterday. Um, I've got a link on Amazon I can give you for where to buy those. They come in like a six pack of different size brushes. So, all right. I've got this cute, adorable little green polka dot ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. Look at my fingers. Isn't that awful? <laughs> It'll all wash off. And I'm just going to kind of scrunch it in my fingers. And I've got this one. I'm going to scrunch it that way. And these are just going to have kind of smallish bows because you don't want the bow to like take over. So I kind of crisscross them and then put one across the middle. 
And then I got my string here, and I'm just going to replace my thumb and forefinger, twist it around, and tie. Oh, hang on. What happened to my string? I had strings that I was going to hang on the... Oh, they're all in the floor, y'all. I forgot something. Before I make up my bow, I have to do the string to hang it by. Um, you don't necessarily have to do a string, but the string kind of makes it to where your bow is reversible. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so I've got my jute string. I tied a knot in each end. And I'm going to cut most of the excess off the end of these so it doesn't have just a ton hanging off. All right, let's redo the bow here. All right, so I'm crisscrossing these two, putting this one across the middle. And then, before I tie my string around it, I'm going to put the piece, this is the piece I'm hanging it from. I'm gonna stick that up under there. That way, it's tied to the string that it's gonna hang from. And then I'm just gonna tie this second piece of jute around and make a knot. There I go biting my tongue. That's genetic, by the way. <laughs> my mama does it when I'm concentrating. I bite my tongue. All right, and I'm just cutting off the excess. Okay, so I've got my bow, and the string is going through here. So it kind of is holding it all together. Everybody got it? Okay, and I'll shape it like after I get it on the door hanger. All right, so our door hanger is over here. My staple gun is right here. Okay, so on one side, let me see if I can pull this down a tad bit so you can see, because it's hard to do it while holding it up. All right, on this side, we want the bow to set over here. So I'm just, I've got a staple gun. If you don't own a staple gun, I highly recommend that you do. And I'm kind of nutty. I <laughs> have toothpicks taped to the bottom of my staple gun, and you may wonder why. It is to prevent my staples from going completely all the way through the wood. It's kind of to give it some clearance. Um, because the wood that I paint on is quarter inch thick, and I don't want my staples to go all the way through and pop through the other side. So that kind of helps with that. So you're just going to staple right above the knot on this side. Then you're going to flip it around and take the other end. There's still some wet black paint on this, and I'm getting it all over my fingers. I'm trying not to get it on the ribbon, though. If you guys were doing this at home, you'd probably have the good sense to wait till it dried. But since I'm doing it on Facebook Live, we're just flying by the seat of our pants here. Okay, so even though it looks kind of ugly sticking out right there, it doesn't matter so much because it's stapled on this side, but not this side. Can you see that? It goes to the other side. So on the first day of school, you'll be able to take your ribbon and slide your bow down right here. Let me fix my camera angle again here. There we go. So you'll be able to fix your ribbon on this side and kind of fluff it up right before you get ready to take your picture and you have your adorable little child hold it and you're all ready. And there you go. You're ready. Jeez. And then on the last day of school, Epiphany, it's summer. You slide it across and you're ready for the last day of school photo. And hopefully you don't forget that you've got this in the closet and you can take a picture on the first day and the last day and then you can put a collage side by side and you'll have this adorable little picture of how much your child has grown over the years. So, Melissa, you love the idea about using the toothpicks. You have that issue with your staple going through the wood. So you just drill holes. I hate using the drill to drill through holes because then you gotta sand the holes and you gotta put the wire through. So my staple gun is my best friend. And you can get quarter inch staples, like these little staples are very skinny. Um, they make them, they, they sell these at Hobby Lobby, but I like this metal one. It just, I don't know, it's more durable and it like, I can get the staples for it at Lowe's. So anyways, I'll be back on here again tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to talk about it yet. We'll just kind of figure it out tomorrow. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for sharing the video if you have. And uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Bye.